Hello guys, it's Bella and welcome back to another episode of Mystery Monday. Before we get started, I am so sorry for like the echoey noise that happens when I talk. I just moved into my new house and I just set up the filming room so I literally have nothing but the stuff behind me so it's really echoey and yikes I didn't even notice until I started filming and then I was just like oh so bear with me hopefully I will get this sorted by my next video but uh. also I'm so sorry that I missed last week's mystery Monday I have been so incredibly busy moving into this place and then my friends also threw me a surprise 1 million party which was incredible um, and that happened on the night that I was actually going to film this and then on top of that I have been really really sick lately I'm still a little bit sick just like recovering I've been in bed haven't even been able to unpack this place because I've just been so sick and it, that's kind of why I sound a little bit manly right now but anyway I just want to tell you guys why I missed last week's episode but I am back better than ever and that's gonna be a new one every single Monday so stay tuned give this video a thumbs up if you of course want me to continue the series and let's just go ahead and get into this week's case today's case is going to be about the disappearance slash murder of the Grimes sisters so on December 28th in 1956 Barbara Grimes who was 15 and Patricia Grimes who was 13 went to go and see the love me tender movie by Elvis for the 15th time because they were obsessed with Elvis they left home at 7.30 p.m. and they had no more than $2.50 in their pockets. They were meant to return home by 11.45 if they did decide to stay and see the second screening of the movie. Their mother, Loretta, her friend Dorothy was also at the movie. She saw them at the concession, said they were really happy and was actually sitting behind them in the first screening of the movie, but she didn't say for the second screening, so she has no idea if they were there for the second screening, but they and never came home at 11.45 when they were supposed to. Loretta grew worried and she ended up sending her older two children down to the bus stop near their house where Barbara and Patricia would come home via the bus like on their way home from the screening of the movie that she sent her two older children down there and they waited to see if they were coming home and they waited three buses went past they waited until 2 a.m. and there was no sign of Barbara and Patricia so they went home and they told Loretta that the girls did not come home after Loretta learned that her daughters didn't come home she ended up calling the police and in the following days they ended up having one of the biggest citywide searches in Chicago's history. Even neighboring cities and counties to Chicago helped out. They provided resources and people to search for these girls, but they found nothing. By the way, I know I'm in the middle of a Mystery Monday, but I just want to say this really quick because last time this happened in a Mystery Monday, I had so many comments about it. No, I am not crying. I'm just really sick. So I have to take a break like every three minutes to cough because talking too much, it just like makes me cough so incredibly much. So no, I am not crying. I'm not high before I get a million comments asking that. I'm just sick still, so it's really hard for me to talk for a long period of time. Anyway, let's get back to the case. After this search, there were a lot of random sightings of the girls that were actually called in and reported, and they were all over in different cities, all over America, some even as far as Nashville, Tennessee. It led to the theory that they ran away to go and to see and meet Elvis. This theory actually ended up blowing up to the point where Elvis went on the radio and and pleaded for these girls to return home. The only reason I'm mentioning this theory now is because it actually was factually disproven, this theory, like it's impossible that this theory could be true, but I just wanted to mention it because I thought it was interesting and it's a big part of the case and I just want you guys to know everything about the case, so I'm including it anyway, but I just want to include it now instead of when we get down to like the theories and stuff because you guys will be like, why are you mentioning this? It's not even true. So their mother Loretta did not believe for a second that they ran away because they left everything behind. They had no clothes, they had no money, they had nothing and there was just no way that they left behind their Christmas present. They got a AM radio 
there for Christmas and they were just obsessed with it and their mother just thought there is no way that they would leave without it. Unfortunately on January the 22nd in 1957 the bodies of the two girls were found in Willow Springs. A man named Leonard Prescott was driving along German Church Road when he saw two bodies on the side of the road and originally he thought they were mannequins when he first saw them so he headed home and he got his wife and together they came back and had a look at the bodies and discovered that they were not mannequins they were in fact the bodies of Barbara and Patricia and they were actually found naked. When the bodies were found they were actually in a really weird position as well. Barbara was face down naked, they were both naked and Patricia was on top of her facing up perpendicular to Barbara and on top of this their faces had been like ravaged at by animals so they were quite damaged. So at 1.30 p.m. the Prescott family couple Leonard and his wife called the police and reported the bodies and the police actually determined that the bodies had been there for about two weeks. They had been there since January 9th or January 10th and the only reason that they hadn't been discovered is because there was a whole bunch of snowfall and it was only just melting which is why their bodies were out in the open rather than under the snow. From their autopsy it was also proven that they died within four hours of going missing. So the night that they went to go and see um, Love Me Tender by Elvis, they died four hours after that as they still had their dinner from that night in their stomachs. So this is why basically the theory that they ran away is just impossible that it's true because they still had their dinner, they died four hours after, so. There was no obvious cause of death and their death actually was ruled a murder but they had no explanation for the death so they said that they died of shock due to exposure of the elements. The coroner Walter McCarran who actually um, conducted the autopsy and gave a cause of death um, he was criticized really hard for this because it seems like the autopsy results were fudged. But after the bodies were found there were quite a few suspects as to who could have murdered these girls and one of the most famous suspects was Edward Lee Bedwell who actually confessed to the murders but there wasn't enough evidence to convict him. He also ended up recanting his admission of guilt and it's also said that he was coerced to even admit it in the first place by the County Cook Sheriff's Police Department and he was then cleared of any involvement in the case. So the case ended up going cold after this until 2012 when Ray Johnson who is an author and he was also a former criminal investigator um, actually came up with a new lead. When Ray was looking into the murder of Bonnie Lay Scott which took place in Addison um, he actually discovered that her case and the case of the Grimes sisters was really really similar. Bonnie was 15 at the time that she was murdered and she was also found naked. There were also non-lethal marks on Bonnie's body which were very similar to those that were on the Grimes sisters. The man who was responsible for Bonnie's murder, Charles Leroy Melkist, I believe it's pronounced. Apparently he made a phone call to Loretta um, bragging about the fact that he had killed her daughters and gotten away with it. Originally when um, Loretta received this call it was anonymous but later on Loretta heard his voice in like an interview or something like that and she just knew that it was him. She was like this is the man that called me. He has an unforgettable unforgettable voice. So as soon as she heard his voice she just immediately knew it was him and said she would never forget his voice. So there was actually apparently a third girl who was abducted with the Grimes sisters who was 14 years old at the time of the abduction but didn't come forward because she was scared. She was 14 and she just didn't know what to do basically. She did agree to talk to the authorities about this but I couldn't find any information further than this interview that Ray had with her and her identity was kept a secret because she did not want to draw any attention to herself but she did say one thing she said he had an unforgettable voice. Apparently it was very distinctive which could link in with the fact that Loretta heard his voice and said that she knew that it was his voice as soon as she heard it because 
as these people are saying, he could have had a very distinctive voice. Charles was actually convicted for Bonnie's murder and he was sentenced to 99 years in jail. He only served 11 of these and when he got out he married and had two kids which I just wanted to point out because I just find that so disgusting that someone can murder, like literally murder someone and then go on to live happily. But anyway, he ended up passing away um, in 2010. But Charles did end up passing away in 2010, so he can't be interviewed for the murder of the Grimes sisters. And on top of this, unfortunately, Loretta passed away at the age of 83, and she is just never going to know what happened to her daughters, which just breaks my heart into pieces. But that is all of the information for this case. I want to know what you guys think. Considering the similarity of the Bonnie case and the... Grimes sister's case, I definitely would be leaning towards this guy, Charles, um, but obviously I don't really have a theory, there's not like a whole lot of theories on this case, and it's not really like a theory driven case like a lot of the cases that I do, that I talk about are. But I still would love to know what you guys think of this case, and if I missed any information, definitely make sure to comment it down below in the comments. Let me know what case you want to do next, um, you want me to do in my next video, and hopefully I will see you guys next time. Bye!